We have a brand new, very fun segment on today's episode. And a reminder, your drafts are coming up or maybe going right now or maybe you got some more on the horizon. You need to check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Dominate your draft, make your league mates look silly, and enjoy today's episode. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, August 22nd. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back for another episode. Very excited to be with you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for spending some of your day with us. We appreciate that. And we hope it's worth your time, and that you get smarter, and that you enjoy your day more. There's a chance. There's a chance that's all true. We do have a pretty fun episode today. We have some news to catch you up on. And we're debuting a brand new segment on the show today that I thought would be fun. And we're calling it Take Swap. So we have written some uh, rather concise but interesting fantasy football takes for one another. And we have not read these takes. I think what we've done is we've just corrected, you know, course for our fellow colleagues. We have we see where they are just wrong. And so we have done our friends across the table a service, and we have written them what they should be saying instead of what they are constantly saying. So, yeah, we're getting one another to put some things on record today. Yeah. Against their will. And they have to read them no matter what. Oh, That's great. the rule, oh, right? Great. Wait, what's, on, what's on these? I just, I'm just saying no matter what, you got to read it. All right. Okay. Brand new take, Jason. Um, we trying have to, Trying to get me canceled? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? See that would hurt. That would hurt me too. I think we're That's safe in that department. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see you later, suckers. <laughs> Fantasy footballers with Mike. Yeah, this might have been a mistake. A um, couple of headlines as we get into the quick question. Just a reminder: the Megalo Bowl available, open right now. Come and join thousands of Foot Clan members in the Megalobowl. largest fantasy football tournament on the planet, and uh, that's megalobowl.com. Every Foot Clan supporter gets a free entry. And you can learn all the rules about the league, the trades, the settings, the playoffs. Um, the awards. Every every week of the season, we update a, um, a standings list. And mm -hmm. we, we often comment about that on this show. So you'll be able to find out how you're doing in the big picture. But um, megalobowl.com. And the Ultimate Draft Kit available right now. Go to ultimatedraftkit.com. Get all of the tools and resources you need to dominate at your draft if you want. Uh, you can use the app during your draft to mark players as drafted, to set some players aside as as targets, and a ton of other tools available at ultimatedraftkit.com. Today's quick question. Jumping right in. This one comes in uh, over on X from uh, Trey Snolder. Writes in. That's the handle, you know. Mm -hmm. Of course. Do you guys have any tips for preventing or dealing with tilt during your fantasy draft, which is a real thing. You've got a plan, and the plan can go a little bit sideways. Yeah, we've all been there, and we all have our plans and all of our, you know, break glass in case of emergency thing, and then sometimes that glass is like, oh, man. It's already been broken. It's already been broken. Now, what do I do with this shard of gr glass? Um, I What do you do? I, I shank people. Yeah, but oftentimes when you're on tilt, you shank yourself. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're 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 getting in your own way of successful okay. drafting. I would just say, look, it's it's backup plans or cry. You either you know it's like <laughs> that's the, that's your plan is that, you. It can be both. You're saying that the your way of avoiding tilt is tears. Is, I'm saying that if you don't have a backup plan oh. for whatever's about to happen, you will cry and tilt. I got. So, you. I thought those were like companions. Yeah, like if your backup that, yeah. plans don't work then you cry yeah so um whenever you're a couple picks away let's say you're four picks away and there's two guys you like stop it stop it you're four picks away find four four players yeah. that you like 
or I guess then five players that you like. You you can't do that to yourself. You can still tier them. We want you to draft in tiers and have that successful. You know that's that's going to also tier based drafting, which we've got all of our tiers in the Ultimate Draft Kit. That will help you avoid these massive mistakes because you you know where the value is still left over and so you can usually have that value there when you come back around to your next pick but really when we tilt it's because we're not giving ourselves enough options we're we're saying that I'll only be happy if this guy or that guy's there and and you're just setting yourself up for failure yeah and and my my answer was just acceptance because if you're in that situation where everything depends on one player coming to your team and that means okay my next picks uh, a lot of questions come in. They're like, do I start running back, wide receiver, wide receiver, or do I start wide receiver, running back, running back? Which What do I do? Like, that's not letting the draft come to you. That's not accepting what's in, you know, what just happened and, you know, adjusting to what took place in the draft. That is, you know, really dependent on everything falling the right way, which will lead to you tilting. The sooner you accept that that player was taken, that you were targeting, the quicker you'll be able to materialize a plan for the future, just understanding that, look, the draft's going to go different than I thought. It happens every year in our league of record, and we've been playing with these guys for 15 years. So, you know, just accept. And, and I think just really knowing who your tilt players are, and look, they can't be first or second round guys. They like, if you're tilting over players in the first or the second, then you, what are you doing? Get a hold of your life. You know where you're going to be drafting, and you know the range of guys that you're going to be able to get. And so after that, it's if you know that these are your guys, don't play stupid games because when you win, when you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes, as I tell my children. And just make sure you get those players. Like you, you might have to take a player around early, but if that is your guy that you got to have. Take them in whatever. Take them in the fourth instead of the fifth, or take them in the fourth instead of the sixth. I don't know. Just know who those players are, because it shouldn't it shouldn't really be too many. We all have, you know, those those few players. We're like, I gotta get that guy. Just make sure you do it. And I, I would also add that, like, you you might make a mistake. Like you 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 legit might panic pick somebody. That happens. Like you get on the clock and you're like, I don't know what to do. And then you make the pick and then you you come to your senses and you're like, oh no. Yeah. And then you. You Don't let that no, spiral. No way to recover. Right. <laughs> when those things happen. Yeah, I mean, and, and what I'm saying is, like, redeem the draft. If you do make that mistake, try your best to just get back on the horse and make the right next pick. Implement some box breathing and, like, right. bring it all back. Uh, yeah. yeah. Or run away from the draft screaming and never come back. <laughs> sure. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, Mike Tomlin said that running back Jalen Warren's hamstring injury is not of long-term concern, probably out for this week. So that's uh, that's pretty big news. I did not make any extensive changes after the news of the injury because I figured week one was going to be okay for Jalen Warren. I'm I talking just, five or six carries danced around. Yeah, I really just – I think I took a little away from it, but mostly just moved his risk rating up. Yeah, I, I don't like I don't like camp strings. While we camp strings, yes. Um, while we are giving all of this news and talking about you know how a player is doing this week, if they're going to be back next week, it is worth just bearing in mind NFL kickoff is two weeks. It's in two weeks from today, so that is the timeline for when they say they're 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 going to be ready week one. That is two weeks from now. Yeah, it's a good reminder. I just J hear this week to week stuff, and now I start getting the. Mm. Yeah, you get to that second of the week to week, <laughs> right? And so you're like, playing football. It's either a week, or if it's week to week, then you're missing week one. Um. All right. Which is, I mean, yeah. Curtis Samuel, right? Sitting on week to week right now. Exactly. Jalen Waddle returned to practice on Wednesday. That's good. <laughs> Tyree Kill held out as a precaution. Waddle had been out of practice since August seventh with uh ooh, undisclosed minor injury. Yeah, yeah, don't like that. Don't like that. It wasn't really loud. Why you no disclose? Why it wasn't very loud on social media. I went and I was like, "What are you talking about?" And then saw a couple, a few posts about it from like a couple days ago. But this was not like, look, the people in Miami were not sounding the alarm about it, reporting about it all the time. At least the beat reporters yeah. I follow. So I, I do have to be like, okay, I guess it was a minor injury, and they're just letting him be fully healthy. Dallas Goddard did not practice on Wednesday. Oblique injury. 
that's been injuries have been a part of his story for a while and uh, not that we ever 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 want injuries but it is one of the things where when Dallas Goddard has gone down in the yeah. past you just see what happens to Devontae Smith it is it is wonderful for fantasy yeah consolidation of targets yeah all right guys hey. <laughs> oh man I mean I, I almost feel like sad music belongs here but uh Kendra Miller Saints running back early offseason hopes and dreams uh, he he may be placed on injured reserve to start the season. It would rule him out for the first four games. He pulled his hamstring on day one of training camp. They were already changing offensive systems. The Taysom Hill buzz as a running back has been building. You already have Jamal Williams there, and Alvin Kamara is the RB1. And Uncle Cremudgeon. <laughs> Dennis Allen, Dennis the Menace, came out and also said, I know he's talented, but I don't know if he can learn the system. I don't know if he can pick up the system because I haven't seen him out there. What? So, so now your barrier to success is health and a coach that doesn't believe in you. Dude, sometimes being a leader <laughs> means you you protect the people who are under your leadership. And you just say, like, he's, he's a really talented guy. It hasn't gone the way that that we saw it going when we drafted him in the third round, really excited to get him on the field, but but it's you just it's been a struggle. You don't think that easy? You know what? I I made that up off the top of my head. Right? Really? Yeah. yeah. Just now, guys. like if it a was, microphone was in your face, just hypothetically, you could come up with that. Just now, and I have no experience being a coach talking to the media. But you're also not stressed out that your job is on the line <laughs> and that you don't know what you're doing. Like, you, you don't have fears of those. Yeah, so Dennis Allen, I mean, yeah, this is uh, Get out of not, my life. Not great. Kevin Stefanski said Deshaun Watson had general arm soreness. This was yesterday, Ew. and so he was held out of team drills. He has not made a decision on whether Watson will play in the preseason finale monitor this yeah. but um if he plays in that preseason finale you should be encouraged and then we are two weeks away we're yeah. two the, the nfl starts two weeks from today the whole thing about i was hoping to avoid digging in here yeah i know <laughs> i know you were because you've talked up the browns and the offense and some of their <laughs> weapons but this is a this is a real problem deshaun watson has been injured this whole offseason. His problem last year was injury. He didn't Chase, look do, good when he was on throwing the shoulder. Deshaun Watson, I don't think you understand this. He can be inaccurate no matter how much practice time he gets. <laughs> that is true. Uh, he can be, but I. Th this is not good. I mean, you, you had a report like this on Anthony Richardson, you know, a month or two ago, which was kind of the expected timeline, but we're, we're right G here. General, I'm not overplaying it. I'm sorry. General arm no, soreness. I I'm, don't want to. Over I know you want Jameis. I don't want. To, oh man, I would love to have Jameis out there just for fun. Um, it, it's it's one of those things where last year Deshaun Watson I didn't think looked good when he was on. Even though for fantasy he had it some games, like he had a sore arm. It I looked, don't think anybody thought he looked good. I yeah, agree with that. And yeah. so if he's still dealing with, we're waiting for him to look good. Arm problems in his throwing arm. Yeah. I, is is very difficult for me to believe he's going to be back to the guy he was many 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 years ago. Only thing that can make that contract worse is him never playing on it. Yeah, and All he's, right. he's going to do his best. <laughs> I didn't know this was happening when I brought Deonta Foreman up um, on yesterday's show in Hungry for More, but Pierre Strong Jr., the Browns running back who was uh, running ahead of him. Yeah, he, was, he was the backup. Suffered an apparent upper body injury at practice on Wednesday. Uh, he was placed into an ambulance. Yeah, we don't, but, we don't have any more information as of this recording. There you go. Uh, it's just wild timing. And remember, Deonta Foreman, he had his own ambulance ride just a, a couple weeks ago. So hopefully Pierre's okay, but it's a situation to monitor. Because it, it, Andy's hungry for more is correct of if it's Jerome Ford and Deonta Foreman, I, both of them should have some value. That is today's news and notes presented, as always, by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We'll take a quick break and come back with the debut of a brand new segment. <laughs> All right, it is, it is time to jump in. So what's funny over this this, this segment? Yeah, this I'm, was, just, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. I have no idea how this is going to go. Yeah, I don't know how brutal or intellectually honest you guys are going to be oh well you're going to find out <laughs> <laughs> 
Take Swap. All right, we are uh, we're going to start with Jason and myself. Okay. We are swapping takes written for one another. All right. So, Jason, are you going to read first? Uh, I don't I'll, know what the strategy is uh, here. Yeah, I'll, Better uh, to read first or second? I'll go first since it's in my hand. I All have right. the script from Mr. Holloway. Yeah, let's just hear what, you, what you've been thinking about lately. <laughs> okay. Hey, everyone. Big Shimmy here with a big-time <laughs> breakdown, a long time coming. It's time I came clean. I've put up a front for far too many years. It's time for the truth. If there's one thing I love about fantasy football, it has to be the way we score quarterback fantasy points, especially their rushing yards. Rushing quarterbacks are a true advantage in the NFL field, so why wouldn't they be in fantasy? I'm done kicking against this entirely fair and upstanding <laughs> scoring setting and finally coming out in favor of what we all know, a rushing quarterback is more valuable in real life, so they should be in fantasy. Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, Cam Newton, Josh Allen, these guys were NFL MVP caliber players, so of course they should be our fantasy MVPs. Fantasy quarterback scoring is as perfect as my all-black wardrobe. <laughs> Nothing tends to change, and it's about time we started embracing the truth instead of complaining about it like big fat babies. Rushing quarterbacks are here to stay. And so this is this is the very final opinion on the matter. Not to be nullified by any future comments on this topic. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. I'm I'm, I'm a little surprised. I'm I, a lot surprised, Jason. Yeah, I mean th this is this is uh it's a big turn uh, about face. Yeah, you know what I mean? It is a very big about face. It's what uh apparently inside I've always believed um, Look at the uh, the rushing touchdown scored inside the five by quarterbacks last year. Jalen Hurts thirteen, Josh Allen eight of them. Mm -hmm. um, very impressive performances. I mean, I, these guys is more and more. I I agree. I mean, a touchdown is worth a touchdown, just like it is in all of the leagues I play. Six yeah, points, yeah. Well, six points rushing, <laughs> six points passing. You're right, Andy. <laughs> we are right together. Yeah, right, we're I, just I agree. we're we're very. I, I kind of I. I I tend to forget about that when I get mad about the quarterback of ten yard ten rushing yards is a point or twenty slash twenty five passing yards is a point. I don't even factor it. My anger is not influenced by. No, there's leagues out there where a quarterback throws a touchdown and it's four points, or they run it in and it's six. That's so dumb. It's the same exact touchdown. Um, here's a question for you. I mean, you. it's perfect <laughs> because it lets. I mean, obviously, if you look oh, at the man. greatest of the greats, uh, you're going to you, – you, I mean, who's the greatest quarterback playing right now? It's that list that, that I just said. It's not Mahomes. It's, uh, you know, <laughs> okay, it's Cam okay. Newton. Hey, um, by the way, do you think teams will adjust to the quarterback sneak situation because we've seen so many scoring on that play, that design play? That has become more prolific. There were 18 different quarterbacks that had more than two – rushing touchdowns inside the five. That was an NFL record. That's 18 quarterbacks that got more than two on sneaks. Like we talk about the tush push, Kelsey leaving. I mean, what happens not, when there's an adjustment to that? I mean, are you looking it's at not very, it's not a sneak anymore. If ever, if you can see it coming, it's not really sneaky. <laughs> well, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's now just a quarterback touchdown. It's just a quarterback run. Yeah. I mean, they're going to try to stop it, of course, but they've been trying to stop Jalen Hurts for two years and they haven't been able to. All right, uh, Andy, what what do you need to get off your chest? Yeah, I've actually been thinking about something lately, and um, fortunately, Jason wrote it down for me. So um, here we go. I, I have not read this. Have you ever had those great moments of clarity when you notice something about yourself that you need to change? Mm. I think I'm having one right now. <laughs> hey, 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 stay on script. Thank you, Mike. And then you never, ever change a thing? Well, that's what I, Andy Holloway, like to do. Years really? Ago, years ago. <laughs> what? What's happening? That's how I talk. Uh, years ago, I talked about how I don't give enough credit to valuable wide receiver twos on their team. But the cool thing is, the cool thing is, I just keep making the same mistake. <laughs> oh, man. That is year cool. Year after year after year. Always the wrong decision. But now, thanks to my incredibly handsome and super funny friend in a black shirt, I'm going to write that wrong. Good for you, brother. Uh, T. Higgins uh, is a very talented wide receiver. 
I just haven't given him enough credit because he's a wide receiver too. Last season, he was a second round draft pick. And what has changed in his situation to make him drop so far in my rankings other than getting rid of Tyler Boyd and his 100 targets? Yes, last year he was injured and Joe Burrow was injured. It was a bad lost year for the Bengals, but T. Higgins is really good. Oh, it's good to hear you say that finally, Andy. Joe Burrow is really good, and this offense is really good. Mm. And wide receiver twos for good offenses tend to crush in fantasy football, and I am finally going to realize my mistake and become a man, grow some hair on my chest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, draft T. Higgins everywhere. Wow, wow. I am. Wow, everywhere? I everywhere. That's your that's that's your guy now. And that's my opinion that on is, the matter. I'm happy to hear you say that since it felt like you have been off of T. Higgins with dumb dumb opinions. Like I so basically I admitted my mistake years ago, but mm -hmm. then made no changes. And now it's time for me to Yeah, you like you, just not just admit it, right? You got through the first step of the problem. Yeah, admit you have a problem. Yeah, but you, you there is it. a there's a step two that you need to move on Which to. Which I believe is fix it. <laughs> so fifth round pick right now, T. Higgins. Wide receiver, 27. You're pulling the trigger then, both in, of you. In ADP, I am uh, looking Joe Burrow's two healthy seasons. He was top 15 in points per game in 2021. Wide receiver, 14 points per game, 13. or In 2022, he was wide receiver, 13 in points per game. The Cincinnati offense, they since they have figured it out, which was a few years ago, they have been just – they let it rip. Like, they let Joe Burrow be the the man for this team. Uh, we don't have to get mad at their coaching staff for, for uh, repeatedly running like cowards. It's just a good thing that despite the fact I'm not sure why, my opinion has finally changed on this. So, yeah, it great. is. I think the Foot Clan is going to appreciate it because he's a better wide receiver than you give him in the past credit for. Okay. Okay. Well, it's time for Mike and Jason to swap takes. All uh, um, right. All right. Well, I've I've already read one, so Mike, I'm gonna give you yours first. First. Okay. okay. All right. This is. Uh, I'm excited to. Yeah. Uh, this is a bit kind of cathartic today. Good. Yeah, I mean, sometimes Good we gotta Lord, get. This is long. We gotta get stuff off our chest, you know. All right. All right. What do you have to get off your chest, Mike? I love stats. <laughs> I love a good behind-the-scenes metric, some juicy numbers. That's going to help me know if someone is good or not. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> you do. <laughs> All right, Mike, I, keep going. Uh, but sometimes I will finally admit I get too caught up in the advanced metrics and can't see my nose from my face. What? Your nose from I your just face? coined that phrase. What? It's going to be famous someday. You heard it here first. I can't see my nose from my face. It's so stupid. Anyway, I had a revelation. Joe Mixon, the player I have always thought was inefficient and not actually good, and just yesterday I said would be a bust, is, well, good at football. Really? Joe Mixon is – a really good running back. I know it might. I know it mind sound crazy. <laughs> Means I got to read it. Oh, yeah. The, me saying that the running back five last year is good, but he is. How good? Did you know that Joe Mixon is the only running back who's been an RB1 each of the last three years? That's right. The only one. Not Christian McCaffrey. Not Derrick Henry. Whoa. Nor any other RB in the NFL. Only my dude, Joe <laughs> Mixon. <laughs> yeah. And now he's the bell cow back for a top 10 offense again. After getting a new bag of money, new big bag of money, what was I thinking? Of course, Joe Mixon is going to be very good for fantasy this year because Joe Mixon is very good at football, according to me, Mike Wright. Wow, that's a big change. Yeah, I, th I feel I, like I'm, that's just a rapid change. The yeah, last just 24 had a, hours. a bus episode yesterday. <laughs> yeah, well, this is look. Sometimes it takes us saying something wrong to have to correct it, and I think yesterday. Yeah bust take i'm proud of you for seeing it so quickly let's put the adp to the test for joe mixon james cook my guy joe mixon i think uh i think both of you are on the cook side of that one yes yes i am i mean <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, alvin Kamara, who i feel like nobody wants to draft but everybody knows will be better than people expect or joe mixon mike because that one's one where you're getting kind of you're dirty on both of them yeah, you're, you're you can't keep getting away with this on both of them. <laughs> yeah, I will between the two of them I would I would take James Cook. I want I want to ch uh, I want to chase some youth upside here over Camara. Well, I you're think talking it was about Joe Mixon or no, 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 Mixon. Sorry, Mixon or Camara. Oh, well, uh, that's not even a question. 
Oh, it's Camara. Very no, Joe Mixon. Very good at football. Yeah, oh, I see. Football, I see. We're... But genuinely taking the taking. No, it away. I will take Alvin Camara. Okay. But I'm I'm curious, Rashad White, because Rashad White. Oh, is in his stop. own right. He stop is. Stop a, doing this to me. He is a can't keep getting away with it. Inefficient player. Oh. Now he's not on as good an offense, and he's being drafted ahead of Joe Mixon. I have. R Rashad White. Yeah, is where are you with Rashad White? He's impossible. He is 100 percent impossible because. It's now been multiple years of him showing the team he can be a bell cow running back. And I think it, he's just going to do that same thing. He 100% can. Uh, I do have, but I have some fears that they finally have a player on the team in Bucky Irving who can come in and do the, the superpower that Rashad White has, which is pass catching. I, Rashad White is inefficient on the ground, but he's he's a good pass catching running back. He can make things happen in that part of the game, and I think that if if Bucky Irving gets started to work into that part of a uh, part of the game, like that's a huge huge downgrade for Rashad White. The part about Bucky Irving can do that, but literally Rashad White's the best at it, and that's what kills me about it. Like when I when I think of what makes a running back special in the passing game, I am drawn to the fact that he caught 91% yeah. of his targets. That number is insane. It, it that is sounds truly insane. Truly unrepeatable. Well, he was at, he was 86% the year before. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean that's a great number, but that's very good. But yeah. I mean 64 of 70 targets and then 86% the year before. What you're doing is like why if you're a professional football team, you don't change that part of it. That's just my opinion on the Bucky Irving thing. Like very don't change the best in the league. Very good at football. Joe Mixon has has caught more than eighty six percent of receptions in a season, two times, in his career. That's pretty good. Well, he but, is very good at football. I agree. But uh, but I'm saying that that's a that's a uh, Rashad White just he might be that good at that part of the yeah, game. Yeah, I, I that's why I, I don't under I, depth is important, but right? Chase Edmonds didn't get it done. Like Bucky Irving can fit a role, and I just think Rashad White does the same stuff. And that, but the concern is like maybe you just you need to get Rashad White some some more rest. So maybe maybe, maybe he keeps doing the the pass catching, and they start working more guys in on the ground. I don't know. He just he's a a very difficult running back because so much of it was just volume, and he's not like a first round running back that you're locked in, and I, I know he's going to get everything. Mike, do you feel as though Jason may have something to get off of his chest at this point? It looks like it from what I can see. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's explore uh, one of my best takes here. Make sure I gave you the right one. <clears throat> yeah, we're good. All right, listen up. <laughs> it's way too early to give up on Austin Eckler. <laughs> <laughs> he was a top eight or better running back in Five of 14 games. He saw over 18 opportunities per game, including over five targets per week, scoring 11.4 points per game. That's a better mark than Swift, Najee, Whoa. Warren, Javante. I really, really enjoyed having him on my team last year <laughs> and was so thrilled Andy yeah, didn't accept my trade for him. If he's got anything left in the tank, Cliff Kingsbury, offensive mastermind, will be the one to get the most out of him. It's like I've always said, I want old veteran running backs coming off their most inefficient season and partnered with rookie mobile quarterbacks. If that's not a recipe for success, I don't know what is. Wow. I thought you had been kind of out. Uh, you know, after last year's experience, I didn't know you were like the burn. What was the first line you just? The first line is it's way too early to give up on Austin Eckler, oh. and that is what my therapist has taught me: <laughs> is that the scars and the burns from last season. Yeah, let it go. They're in the past. Wow. And you want to, you know, you want to oh. have so uh, even a though split backfield committee for a rookie quarterback <laughs> for an aged. <laughs> veteran yeah and and when you think about it only 61 percent of his rushing attempts gained three or fewer yards that is so that's, when i think of it what i so what i say you would word it hold only 31 percent of his carries went for 39 oh 39 yes based on math so 
Austin Eckler has been talked about very little on this show over the offseason. And yet, I mean, he's being drafted as the running back 32, the back of the eighth round. So this it's this isn't a nobody in the draft right now. People no. people are going off going after Austin Eckler. So Jason is in. Andy, where have you gotten to with with Austin <laughs> Eckler? Uh, well, I mean, my um I think my value pick was Brian Robinson, if that tells it you was. anything. I mean, I look at Eckler like a like a re roll of Antonio Gibson from last year which is somewhat irrelevant. I do enjoy – have you seen this quote from Cliff Kingsbury? Yes, I have. I couldn't figure Do you want me out. to read the whole thing? Uh, or just uh, – oh. maybe I'll get to the part that says, I didn't study him much in free agency. <laughs> That's the part. I didn't think he'd be here. You're leaving out the best parts, okay, Andy. Okay, go ahead. When, when offensive mastermind Cliff Kingsbury <laughs> said, I watch and I'm like, this guy's tremendous. So I'm not sure what it was last year, but he hasn't lost a step. He's as quick and as fast and as strong as I've seen him. Uh, so, this is a real quote. This yeah, was not a take. <laughs> this is not a take swap with Cliff. No, that that is a real quote. He does continue on to say, "I didn't study him much in free agency." Here's the thing about pass catching backs. I will say, is that they don't need much to be relevant for fantasy. So when you are looking at him, do I want to take him in the eighth round? I probably will not do that. But could he be a usable flex on certain weeks or in PPR leagues? Absolutely. And in his defense, Eckler, it was on the ground. It was terrible. That's where it was. 179 attempts, three and a half yards per carry. Like that is terrible. He was still eight and a half yards per catch though on 74 targets, caught 51 of them. So a low catch percentage for Austin Eckler. And you didn't get those sweet, if juicy you, receiving touchdowns like you're used to getting, but, but it, like, he was still making big plays. If he was the free agent pickup that Washington brought in to be their guy because they didn't have anybody else, we would be talking about Eckler completely differently. It's the fact of what Jason illustrated. Now, I'm surprised he's not doubting it, but a mobile rookie quarterback <laughs> yeah. with a committee on a team that has got a new head coach and a new offensive coordinator and uh, a tough division, all those things combined means that predictability – like. Look, if we came out and Austin Eckler surprised with six catches in week one and a touchdown and he's a free agent pickup, I mean, that's not impossible, especially no. first half of the year. He's dealt with injuries. He played through injuries, we hope, last year. Because if he didn't play through injury, he has lost it. We watched him go down the sideline like a fullback. So he better have been playing through injuries for us to have any hope. All right, we're going to take a quick break and then come back with um, some thoughts from Mike and myself. All right, Mike. Let's uh, let's swap these. You can, right, you can give me yours. All right, I'll take this. I will go. I will read first. All right. Yeah. Let's let's see what you're thinking mm, these okay. days. As a man known for both tradition and small talk, <laughs> it's it's about time we had a little heart to heart about something near and dear to me. That is, of course, testosterone. It's about time we talked about it. The big T. That gridiron tradition of high T football is a man who likes doing things the way they've always been done. Mm. Playing the that game is you. That is the you. way it was meant to be played. It's time we got back to the roots of the game. Where are my leatherheads at? Oh, last man. year, you shout it out. Last year, the seven teams that ran the ball the least didn't make the. <laughs> last year, the seven teams that ran the ball the least didn't make the playoffs. Well, seven of the top nine teams. Who ran it the most made the playoffs. Whoa. That's a great find. <laughs> Volume, Mike. grit, toughness, the fire in your belly, the pigskin in your paws, running that thing left and right and center until the cows come home. Wow. Do it like they've always done. Hand that rock off and let them churn out those first downs like the forward pass doesn't exist. That's the way <laughs> I like it, and you should too. High T football is the way to go, and it might just be the way to go in fantasy football. I like that you – Still oh, call it the forward pass. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, it's, it's it's this new fangled invention. <laughs> Where are my leather heads at? <laughs> well, I mean, Mike, tradition oh, is, God, is, is something that we know about you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, doing things just because that's how we've all mm -hmm. we've done them. That's what I say is the best medicine. And that those stats that still get you. I mean, they're great stats, of course. But those stats of, well... This team that won, they ran the ball 30-something uh -huh. times. All you got to do is win, if you run the ball 35-plus <laughs> times, you win like 90% of the games. 
that's how statistics that's, work, Mike. That, that, I mean, that is correlation, causation at its root. Yeah, I mean, you and Guns Mahoney. Yeah. I mean, it, it is uh, the interaction between the running game, fantasy football, and the NFL has always been very interesting to me because we've had – a lot of seasons where the most effective running teams, the the ones that do commit to it the most, it's chicken or egg to a degree. You get up, oh, you run the ball yeah, more. Is you you win, you're up, you run. But for a ton of years, I mean, New Orleans, Baltimore, San Francisco last year, like the and like I said, seven of, or like you said, yes, <laughs> <laughs> like you said, seven of the top nine teams that were top. It was the maximum rushing volume. Uh, has been a, a a recipe for success at the NFL level, but at the same time. We look at efficiency. We look at passing look around at the goal line. We like it. Neutral game script. Correct. But I didn't. I didn't realize you were such a. Does this mean? Player. Are you oh, thinking about going running back, running back, running back, running back to start yes. your draft? That's Mike? what we're wondering. Four, yeah, pe four running backs. People were just asking us about zero RB, and I say zero anything but RB. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Wow. Strong point. Is this? Uh, it's my turn. It is. Oh, this is a nice big font. I like this. Uh, Jaden Reed. <laughs> Jade, I, I, I wanted to say this to everybody. Yeah. Jaden Reed was a product of opportunity last year. Wow, could have been. Tell us why. Well, he's a fine-ish player. His numbers are unsustainable. Oh, it's tough to admit. Uh, he <laughs> topped four receptions in only four games. He massively overproduced in the touchdown department. And Reed scored a touchdown on 13% of his touches, a score every seven and a half touches. Over the last decade, we've seen 16 wide receivers have 10-plus touchdowns on 75 or fewer touches, like Reed. The average drop in touchdowns next year, 5.4. That's a lot. When both Reed and Christian Watson were playing together, nine games in total, Reed only managed the measly two quality fantasy games. And look at those playoffs. The biggest stage, the most important games of the season. Reed? Question mark? A combined four receptions for 35 yards over two games. He's a part-time mediocre player surrounded by very talented players. Whoa. Okay. That's, that's I, a scathing review. If I hadn't changed my opinion to this exact thing right here, I would be upset. <laughs> yeah. But now you know. You know what I mean? Yeah, but mediocrity or, or uh, Jaden Reed, I'll just put it that way, um, is he's he's in a crowded – right backfield no, no, of no. other you heard me quality wide receivers yeah and, yeah. The, and the important thing is that some of you out there would be blaming all of the injury struggles over this back stretch of the season and but i've come to realize that those are irrelevant he yep. just sucks oh, well no no he's finish you said yeah, you, yeah he's finish <laughs> you weren't you over, weren't mean to him i mean no i'm sorry i meant uh, a part-time mediocre player oh yeah, yeah that's yeah. better yeah, that's, yeah, that's surrounded by very set. talented Full-time players. And, of mm, course, by full-time mm -hmm. players, I mm -hmm. do mean Christian Watson. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so Who is um, always available <laughs> and on the field. I don't know what I think about my own thoughts. <laughs> you know? Well, some of what you brought up is it fascinating. It sounds, sounds the, like some things you've brought up before. The, the, the truth is that he did overproduce on touchdowns. It's not a sustainable pace for just about for, anyone. For the volume that he got. Yeah, There right. is, to be fair, to my own thoughts. <laughs> Jahan Dotson comes to mind. If you wanted to find the negative case for the Reed rookie season, it would be Dotson. Dotson overproduced, touchdown-wise, was efficient, flash as a rookie, believed in the talent, didn't produce as a sophomore. One of the reasons I didn't make Jaden Reed my my guy is because I knew later on I would write this scathing yes, right. yes. opinion where all of my scouting and opinions on him were kind of changed suddenly in the midst of an episode Dontavian called Wicks. Take Swap. Dontavian Wicks is obviously better, right? I mean, I think I might think that at this point. Yeah. <laughs> he he's not mediocre. No. So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess I could be wrong, and he might end up being amazing, and that talent shines through in this year, but we'll find out. Let's jump into some mailbag. 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 How did we not mailbag swap? Oh, oh, yeah, well, I mean. Like make the deucers do it? doesn't take long to get uh, the Falcon in there. Oh, Falcon. Mailbag. Mailbag. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, his. Now go back. Go 
Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Oh, his face, his face when it wasn't on camera, he's vigorously shaking Dude. his head. No, 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 don't do this. And it was like the music Good was going. For you. You get some credit today, yes. Falcon. You went all in you on it. You embraced the mailbag swap despite, vi I mean, Jason's right. He was. Vigorously shaking his head no. I've never seen someone <laughs> sprint without moving before, but that's what he was doing. He was just trying to run out of this room. That was great. Falcon. That was great. Thank you, Falcon. You get mad props on that. Um, if you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, and click the submit a question button. Um, yeah, Falcon said he blacked out. What just happened? <laughs> you can dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB, and um, here we go. By the way, what was your uh, what was your thought on our first Take Swap episode? Did you, um, you enjoy yourself? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there's some there's some fun things to be had. Hopefully the uh, the audience can understand the difference and what we actually believe, and 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 also hopefully maybe a thing or two there brought to light a different shade of our opinion that uh, maybe is a little bit more reasonable in some of them. Well, probably not for Mike. He does what he's always done. He does what they always do. Yeah, high mm -hmm. T. Yeah. Why are you such a big fan of TD only leagues? Because uh, that's the only time that they score in the NFL. Okay. That's a good point. Perfect. That is the right answer. All right. Our first question comes in from Instagram. Josh writes in, says, what is your view on Kirk Cousins? Uh, I think he's a quarterback. Yep. Yeah. He his. I don't know if you guys saw the playlist. But yeah, that, yeah. There, a playlist where Kirk Cousins, it was his birthday. He got to put it out there. And you know what? It was a good playlist. Yeah, I had no problems with it, uh, but it's it's hard to get overly excited about Kirk Cousins because we like, we we just don't know if he's going to be truly healthy. Uh, you know, it's like it, let me let me bring a, a okay, point up if this is okay, just to ask answer the question for us. Kirk Cousins and Aaron Rodgers are both coming off of devastating right. injuries, different different legs, yes. same injury. Both have, I'm going to just say change teams. Rodgers got to play zero, yeah, yeah. basically That's zero snaps. Yeah. So new new offense, new situation. Both have two of the best running backs in the game of football, B. John Robinson and yep. Reese Hall. Mm -hmm. And both have had prolific fantasy seasons, Rodgers more than Cousins, yep. but both have done it in the past. Both have same year up-and-coming superstar wide receivers, yep. Drake mm -hmm. London and Garrett mm -hmm. Wilson. We do not bring up very often or haven't, I haven't heard it, the fact that the Jets' offense could be prolific. The Jets' offense could be incredible, despite the fact that they have all of those same attributes that Kirk Cousins has, right? But it, it does get brought up around Atlanta. You know, the thought that Atlanta could just turn everything around. They have a worse defense. Maybe that means you think they'll throw the ball more. But the situations are wildly paralleled. Yeah, I From agree. running back to wide receiver to injury to how you've established – I just feel like nobody – like, has anybody whispered Aaron Rodgers' name in a fantasy conversation? No. it. Like, when he like, has all those same things. He, he there are, There's a lot of similarities, but it was just like the upside of the, the Falcons' skill position players. I just talked about Darnell Mooney of – I think that he is still a quality wide receiver. The hope – it's hopes and dreams, I get it, but Kyle Pitts still deserves hopes and dreams because of the – uh, of the talent, at least we saw his rookie season, and over a thousand yards as a rookie tight end, n nearly impossible to do. But he he managed to do it. Where the Jets, like, who is the sec? Not naming Brees Hall, who's the second best pass catcher for the New York Jets? Ah, uh, probably Gibson until Mike Williams comes back. I'm guessing. Yeah, and like I'm not I'm not really factoring Mike Williams into the. The, the the offense it's is kind of funny. Williams and Mooney feel similar, but one of them's not recovering from an ACL. Correct. So that that's that's what I'm saying. Where not I'm, this year. I'm not. <laughs> that's yeah. where I'm saying I'm not factoring Williams in as much as as Mooney. And they I, are I would, back to back in drafts. I would add to that the you've got an age gap here, right? Thirty six years old versus forty years old. So you're forty years old coming off of an Achilles injury, and when. He was 38 years old when Aaron Rodgers was not injured. 
he wasn't that great his last season in Green Bay. I know he lost to Vontae Adams, but, you know, 3,600 yards, 26 passing touchdowns, which is very not Aaron Rodgers-like. Uh, so I think it's like, well, he's got to recover at age 40 and get back to pr prior to what he was when he was healthy. That just seems like a, a tall task, especially for a team that is so darn good on defense that you don't have to push the ball downfield, you, you know, enough for fantasy purposes to, to have, even if they are one of the best teams in the league and they can, you know. Rodgers has never been a yard guy, though. No. No, but he's been a touchdown guy. He's and that's what I'm saying. When, when he was 38, he threw 26 passing touchdowns. His career average per year, points per game for Rodgers is 20 and a half. Cousins' career points per game is 16.2. Yeah, and and in the final year of Aaron Rodgers healthy, it was 14.1. Right. That's 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 yeah, why you, I'm – You've given a lot of weight to that season for now two years because we didn't get to see Rodgers on the field last year. Yeah, it's just he's, isn't that, he's old. Isn't that going to be fun, though? Oh, I can't wait. And and we, I am we missed it last genuinely – I mean, I'm always rooting for all these quarterbacks to do well. Uh, but to get back to the original question of, of Kirk Cousins, if he's healthy, he should be pretty darn good. I mean, this this is a, a the, the Rams system that fits his play style. I you know this he's not going to be mobile, so he's going to be one of those guys that's a low end quarterback one or just a good super flex QB two type. I don't I mean, coming from the Rams system. There's a guy in the Rams system right now named Matthew Stafford. That has two prolific pass catchers, Dan McVay already, mm -hmm. and I I look at Cousins in that lens. I think Cousins I, and Stafford would be the more like occasional weekly upside, but probably, yeah, probably not every week, and probably not top twelve guys. Yeah, that's where I said you're. I I look at Stafford the same way. He's a low end quarterback one, or probably a quarterback two in super flex leagues gotcha. that you're happy to yeah. have. Yeah, that's right. Instagram question from Mike562. Do you believe that George Pickens can be a league winner? No, but I'm probably alone there. No, uh, no. League winner is to actually receive the moniker of league winner, he, he, he would have to finish top five. Now, it, can he be top five? He's being drafted as the wide receiver 29 in the back of the fifth right now. The Steelers, as of this recording a, a little bit early the Steelers and the the Patriots are the only team to not name a starting quarterback now be, because Bo Nix was named the starter for the Denver Broncos did you guys which we should have talked about yeah well I'm mentioning it right now um the the Steelers quarterback situation that's a little strange to me I know Russ has missed a bunch of time uh with injury and everything out of Steelers camp has been no, Russ, Russ is going to be the guy, but then you get or getting the whispers of, well, the quarterback competition is actually a little closer than, than most people would think. So where, do you guys have a read on that? Because that, that affects the, the outcome of George Pickens in a big way as well. I'm, I mean, I saw the report that, you know, it was like they're the only two teams that haven't declared right. a starter. Is that is that really true? Because I feel like Tomlin from day one has said that, quarterback yes. one is. No, he, they, it is true. So he has come out and said that Russ is no longer the starter. I just haven't I haven't seen that he actually never, happen. They never named Russ as a starter. They named him as the as the quarterback one. Well, I mean, that's I what mean, he, that was the phrase he always used. He's the quarterback one, and I don't know what that means if not starter. Means you're first up in practice. Okay. okay, I think it's a bad sign that he hasn't come out come out and declared that and reinforced it. I do. That's where I'm I absolutely it up do. I think most teams have done it. They haven't done it, and frankly. Both guys look like they're not very good. Well, they they are the reason why I say no. It's not Pickens. If 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 uh, tomorrow C.D. Lamb's contract negotiations go sideways and there's a Pickens for C.D. trade, yeah, Pickens could be a league winner uh, playing with Dak as the the wide receiver one there. But I I don't see a league winner for whoever is the wide receiver one between Russ and Fields. Yeah, it league does seem challenging, and I don't even know. I honestly don't even know who I'd prefer. Like Russ provided nothing to Denver's pass catchers, and at least Fields gave you DJ Moore's big season, right? But Fields is a problem behind center too. So I still am blown away that Cortland Sutton had ten 
receiving touchdowns from Russell Wilson. Ten double-digit touchdowns, and he was the wide receiver 36. Yeah, it seems he, impossible. It, was, it does. All right. Um, this is a website question from Caroline in Huntington Beach. Hey, ballers, I play in a half PPR league that also awards half a point for a first down. Nice. How do I take that into account when drafting my positional players? Should I be looking at full PPR rankings? Thank you. Um, it's a great question. This is a uh, this is an interesting topic. There are those out there that would like to kind of push us towards a point per first down format versus point per reception because you know a screen pass for zero yards is not as valuable as a pass for a first down. This is interesting. Of the the half for the catch. And another half, like you complete the PPR if you actually get a first down. I, I, I'm i totally fine with that. Yeah, yeah I, th I, th I think it's cool. I mean, as far as what rankings to look at, I, th I think looking at PPR rankings are fine for this. But what you want to do is go just Google like first downs, you know, last year and see which types of players and which players led the league in first downs and, and, and rank them and, and just kind of sort them mentally a little bit within themselves. If, if they're a behind the line of scrimmage type of screen game guy, that's not going to be the, the, the sticks mover. Uh, I'll give you some data. Yeah. If if we want it. Um, top five receiving first down leaders, so receptions that were for first downs. I bet it's all the high PPR guys. <laughs> Tyreek Hill. Yeah. CD. Uh -huh. Check. Amon Ra. Uh -huh. AJ Brown. Okay. Puka Nakua. Those right. are the top five. No so, one is surprising. Those are not, yeah. The, how that, far? How far does the list go down that you're looking at? As far as we want. Is there any who's three hundred and fifty six? At what, well, Jason? Okay. At what point in the the order is there a name where you go? Oh, Godwin with fifty three, which was right at the same level as Nico Collins, is interesting. That's yeah. Thielen that, yeah, that at fifty six. Yeah. Um, is interesting. Somehow Diggs, they had fifty six first downs. Thielen did. <laughs> The Panthers? <laughs> oh, the team? Amazing. <laughs> um, Maybe interesting that Hawkinson had 48, where, no, yeah, that's, which was the same amount as Laporta despite missing time. Yeah, Hawkinson was having a good year. Um, I'm not seeing anything. I mean, 46 for Jacoby Myers, who is uh, – that's more than Drake Lennon, Rashi Rice, George Kittle. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's, it's more of – the, the the PPR guys at the top are going to be the the first down guys because they're catching a bunch of passes, and the and then the players who like Nico, it's gonna it, it might be a little bit lower because they're they're big play guys. Um, not surprising, you know, rushing first down wise, McCaffrey lapped the field. Yeah. So McCaffrey, and this includes quarterbacks, any any rushing first downs, McCaffrey had. 83 rushing first downs. The next closest was 68. And this is a wild one. The fifth highest rushing in the NFL, quarterbacks included, first downs, Chuba Hubbard. Wait, Carolina had that many first downs? <laughs> <laughs> that one's wild, right? Yeah, it more is. More than Mostert, more than Josh Allen, more than Montgomery. Um, that's a that's a high that number. That is. Because also, I mean – Touchdowns are essentially counted as a first down, so I figure Mostert had twenty some of those. That's, I mean, that is the name that jumps out at the top twenty at the rushing hmm. for rushes. Interesting. All right, we are going to wrap things up today. We got a mock draft episode tomorrow. We've got our live show on Saturday evening. A few straggling seats remain, and uh, you can go to BallersLive.com if you want to come see us live in Los Angeles on Saturday. We would love to see you. The place is going to be packed. We've got s tons of special stuff in store. We're giving away literally like 20 autographed jerseys that we're going to be throwing out into the crowd in the mezzanine. Yeah, which shout out to Pristine Auction yeah, for, for providing all those. Shout out to Sleeper for presenting the show. Absolutely. And we're also raising money for Fantasy Cares yes. with the live show as well. So it's going to be just a really good time to connect before the season and uh, during draft season. So BallersLive.com for tickets. Get into the Megalobowl at Megalobowl.com and we will be back with yet another episode tomorrow. But we will not be doing pick swap during the mock draft. Just so you know. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com.
and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>